Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and in this video we're taking a quick look at the different options for retopology within Blender. I'll be giving the advantages and disadvantages of each approach, but it's not a tutorial about how to use each of these options. Instead it's an overview of which tools to use and when, and the differences between paid add-ons, free add-ons, and just options available in the normal Blender settings. If you want to see a specific video about how to use the tools, then let me know in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. This is part of a series I'm doing on retopology. Playlist link is in the description. The first video looks at what is retopology and why do we bother. This video is split up into chapters and you can find those in the description along with the links. Some are affiliate links, so you'll be supporting me if you click on those. At the end, I'll quickly summarize by talking about the tools that I use. Firstly, we're going to look at the tools within Blender that aren't add-ons, they just come with Blender. The first tool we'll look at is the Decimate tool. So here's an example of a sculpt that's really high resolution, and you can see it's one and a half million faces or three million triangles. And if I zoom in, you can see the resolution detail. I right click and shade smooth, and you can get a further idea. So obviously this sculpt needs to be retopologized in order to be optimal and render quickly, be used in games and so forth. One of the easiest and most useful tools to use within Blender is the Decimate modifier. You come across the modifiers, add modifier, and Decimate is under the Generate, just here. And if I click on that, you've got a ratio here, that's probably the most important thing, and a face count here. So it's telling us the current face count, and I can change the ratio, let's say to 0.1, and press enter. That will pause for a moment whilst it works it out. And that took about 20 seconds, and you can see it's reduced it down to about 300,000 faces. Now because this is a modifier, we actually need to apply it to actually create that geometry on our mesh. And most of the time, that's what you'll want to do, so I'll press Control A to apply it. And again, that will take a few seconds because of the high resolution. And there we have it. So we can now see we've got our faces here, and it's much closer now between triangles and the actual quads. That's because it triangulates the mesh and makes quite a mess like this. So the topology is really bad from the decimate modifier. What it does really well, if I go back to object mode, is it keeps the structure. You can hardly tell that it's got a decimate modifier on it and it's been reduced. That's what makes this modifier really, really useful. If I go into the decimate modifier again, and it should be a bit quicker this time, so I'll bring it down to 0.1 once again and press enter. That was far quicker because it had less faces to deal with. And you can see it's still just about keeping the structure. There's a few places that look a little bit strange, but it's brought it down to 30,000 faces. Let's apply that. And that was quick again. Let's look at the structure. And you can see it adds detail where it needs to. These faces are quite wide and big compared to these fine faces in here around the nostril where it's trying to keep the detail, like I say. And if we come out again, it's not done too badly. So the great thing is it keeps the structure of the shape so it looks very similar to the original, which actually makes it a really important tool. If you're in a rush, you can use this for things that aren't going to be animated to keep their shape. And it's actually really useful if I want to retopologize this with some of the other methods. So when setting up manual retopology, it's good to have a decimated mesh to work on top of, then your computer won't lag trying to snap to the really high poly mesh. So often the workflow is to decimate your model, hide the original, and then retopologize on the decimated model because it keeps its structure. It's also useful for sending stuff off to be 3D printed to a 3D printing program to reduce the size of the mesh and the file sizes, but keep the structure. But as a retopology tool, it creates really dirty topology. And look at my previous video about what dirty topology actually means and the problems you'll have with that. But we certainly wouldn't be able to use this for things like animating, and it's not really very optimized. So the advantages to the decimate modifier is it's easy to use, it keeps its shape, and it also shows you the poly count that you're going towards. The disadvantage is, and it's a very big disadvantage, is the awful topology that it creates. Okay, so next up, we've got the Voxel and the Quadraflow remesh. Now, most of you, if I select my wall object here, will have seen this in the sculpting workplace, and you can come across the remesh and remesh here with the Voxel remesher. You can also access it if I go to the layout mode. You've got the object data properties here, and you've got the remesh options there. So that's the Voxel remesher there. And this has the same options as it does in sculpt mode. Now this isn't really meant for retopology, but it's a quick and easy tool that you can use within Blender without worrying about add-ons. Now the reason I've chosen this wall is because it's the sort of object that kind of works well with this. Let's duplicate it and move it to the side and let's remesh this object. So I'll change the voxel size to something like 0.01, which is the default, and I'll leave everything else as it is. And nice and quickly, we've got this remeshed object if I go into edit mode, we can see it's about 5,000 faces. 
and it's fairly clean topology and it would work well to wrap around this object and bake the detailed information from this object to this low poly object and you could put it in things like games and so forth. So it conforms to the object reasonably well but not particularly well enough for anything detailed. Let's quickly go to my beast model here. I'll duplicate that and bring it off to the side and I'll change the voxel size to 0.1 again and let's do a remesh. Okay, so here you can see the problems that you'll get if you use this as a remesh tool. It's not what it's really meant for, but you can see the awful topology around here as it tries to work out the details and you've completely lost anything like the fingers and it basically just doesn't work. So although it will work for basic objects that are very sort of blocky and it does make a quad based mesh, it's really not suitable for anything with detail. The reason is that these detailed sections will need a lot more topology than maybe the bigger sections in the middle of his torso. So whereas it's okay here, it's obviously not okay for the fingers. And the voxel remesh does exactly that. It takes a kind of grid approach and then puts it over the whole object. So all the polygons are reasonably equal size. Although it does take into account some of the shape around here, as you can see. The quad remesher is slightly different. So if I click on the wall, Shift D and move it across and choose the quad remesher, it's got quadruflow remesh, and this time it allows me to choose the number of faces. I'll choose 5,000 because that's the one next to it, roughly. And it does actually give me some options here about preserving sharp, smooth normals and so forth. But we'll just go with the default and press OK and see what it comes up with. It takes a little bit longer, as you can see down here. And let's see what we've got. OK, so if I go into edit mode, we've actually got just under 5,000 faces, which is great. Let's choose this one and see what we had. That one was actually 2,500, so I must have been looking at triangles. But what you might notice if you look at them side by side is this one actually does try and follow the shape a little bit more. Let's take a slightly closer look at the topology. It's still really even, but it has deformed to the shape very slightly more than this one here. So this one kind of curves around this section here, whereas this one actually just adds a kind of loop cut in here. So it's certainly got a long way to go before it's any sort of real retopology tool, but it is a tool within Blender that you could possibly use if you really want to be quick and you've got a very basic shape with no details. So the advantages to the voxel remesh and the quadruflow is that it's very easy to use. It produces quad based topology. The disadvantage is that you can't have any detailed meshes with this unless you go to a really high poly count and then it's not really retopologizing. And to be fair, it's not really meant for retopology, it's meant for sculpt mode, but it is an option. Next we have the poly builder tool. Now that's located down here, so when you're in edit mode, you can come down here and click on this item. And then I can come into my mesh, select some edges and pull them out like this, so I can build them up. I can still scale them down normally and I can control click and pull out a corner like this. So it's a simple tool to make building a mesh a little quicker. However, you do still need to understand topology and there's a fair bit of setting up before this stage so that your mesh snaps to the object, it mirrors to the other side and so forth. I'll quickly show you a time lapse of me doing that here, but I have to set up a mirror, a shrink wrap modifier, that's my preference anyway, there's other ways of doing it. I have to make sure that snapping's turned on, then I can go into edit mode, select my poly build tool and start building up my shape. So it's a kind of newish tool since 2.8 and it does make things a little bit faster. So a positive is that it can certainly speed up your workflow. It is meant for retopology, so you do get good edge flow. You can kind of position all your faces exactly where you want them and make them small or big, dependent on the detail of your mesh. The downside is it takes a tiny bit of getting used to. You do have to know your setup, shrink wrap, mirror and snapping. You need a good understanding of topology. And actually myself, I find I just use the basic tools in Blender rather than going across the poly builder tool, just because I'm used to the workflow a bit more but it is an option there that can speed things up for you. Okay, so the next tool, Instant Mesh, is actually an external program, but there is an add-on that you can access it through Blender. It's similar in some ways to the internal remesh quad reflow. So you kind of have one resolution and it uniformly spreads it across the mesh. So again, it's good for bulky meshes with no details. So no small protrusions such as fingers. And it does have a tendency to distort small details like that in the same way as the quad reflow did with the beast model. What it does have that's different is the ability to change the flow. So if you have any obvious edges that you want it to flow across, you can guide that flow along the lines of your mesh. However, this is not as easy as it sounds, unfortunately, and it's near impossible to end up with a good edge flow and topology. However, this is a great option for speed and if you're on a budget because it's free. 
Here I have a sculpted wolf. There's the high poly version, which is near 1.5 million faces. This is the decimated version. If I go into that, you can see it's quite a dense decimation and you can see it's around a quarter of a million faces, but that enabled me to take it into Instant Mesh and not have any problems like lagging and it coped very well. This is the Quadraflow remesh and it's done a half decent job, but you can see sort of anomalies around the tail here. And this is the Instant Mesh remesh. And you can see, because I was able to sort out that flow and direct it slightly, it's slightly better than the quadra flow. There's not a lot in it, but it just hugs the shape a little bit better. So the advantages are that obviously it's free, so that's really great. It's really quick. You have some edge flow control, which makes it better than the voxel remesh and the quadra flow remesh within Blender. The disadvantage is though that it's got a uniform resolution, so it destroys smaller details. The edge flow is difficult to control, and it doesn't seem to have any options for mirrored meshes. And there's some quirky issues with it, like it sharpens all your faces, and you have to unsharp them. You must save your file with the .obj extension. And because it's free, it's probably not going to be supported or updated very often. Next is the B surface add-on. You have to enable this add-on, so go to Edit Preferences Add-ons and type in B-Surf and you'll get the B-Surface add-on. Just tick that and make sure it's enabled. Then in your tools under Edit you'll have the B-Surface options. This enables you to draw lines on the mesh and then turn them into quads. This also sets up the shrink wrap modifier for you. This is definitely a good time saver. Drawing lines on like this of the main flow of your mesh can be really useful and a good way to retopologize. So the advantages are that you're in control once again and you can dictate the flow of the topology. It certainly speeds up your workflow considerably. It has sort of a medium control, I would call it. So difficult areas like fingers where they're cylindrical, you still have to go all the way around the mesh and it's quite awkward. So the disadvantages are obviously you still need a reasonable understanding of topology in order to understand where to put the lines, but you can see that as an advantage of having more control. It's a little bit fiddly to get going and working with. It's not really a beginner tool as it takes a bit of getting used to. Overall, I would say this is a must have for people who don't want to spend any money on retopology. Next, we've got the paid for add-ons and I want to start with the quad remesher, which I think is absolutely fantastic. So we've got our mesh here from the voxel remesh and we can see it had lots of trouble when it came to the fingers. I'll delete that and reproduce it. So shift D, grab in the X axis and I'll do a much finer quadraflow remesh. So I'll go to 15,000 faces and press OK. OK, so that's 15,000 and it struggled to do things like the fingers and the face. The details in other places are quite good. So if you've got a mesh that hasn't got those details, you can get away with the quadra flow, but it hasn't really worked in this case. I'll undo that and I'll go even higher to 25,000. And I would say this is kind of the limits for a game character if you're trying to do it really quickly. You shouldn't really retopologize like this anyway for a character because you really need the edge flow to work for animation. But let's say this was a statue. So we've gone to 25,000 and we still haven't got the fingers in there and we've still got a problem with the face. Instant Mesh might handle this a bit better, but it would still have problems around the details of the face area as you can see there. Okay, so let's grab this mesh and pull it off to the side and this time we'll do the quad remesher. So obviously it's an add-on and it comes in in your tools once again. We can change the quad count here. Let's go to 15,000, so a little bit smaller than this one here. You've got lots of really cool settings which will help you. Adaptive size is my favorite, especially for things like characters where you've got these sort of minor details because it will adapt to the mesh. So where it needs the detail, it will put more polygons. Where it doesn't need it, it will put less. And that's the crux of why this is so good. So I'll remesh it and you can see the progress down the bottom. Okay, so it's finished and you can see it's managed to keep the details. So the hands here compared to the quadra flow where the fingers have been chopped off or the face has gone all distorted. The face details have been kept and it's actually done a fantastic job. It's not even done too badly with the edge flow. You can see it going around the arms here and the shoulders here as it distorts to the shape of the mesh. It's actually quite a nice retopo job and you could even use this for animation in this case. It's not always the case that it'll be this clean and nice but it does adapt and understand the flows of the mesh and it does it all automatically. So you can imagine this is a massive time saver. 
If we go into the face count, we can see it's actually increased the faces. So it's up to 26,000, even though I put in 15. And that's to do with the adaptive sizing and going around things like the fingers and the face. So if you've got the adaptive size, especially if you've got it up even higher than this, but it did a very good job at 50%, you want to have a lower quad count so you don't get too many faces. For me, this fits nicely into my workflow, especially if I'm doing something like a sculpt, I can quickly retopologize it like this and go into a multi-resolution modifier and really go up to things like 10 million and 15 million faces because the multi-resolution modifier is really optimized these days for sculpting. But you have to have a fairly clean mesh to start off with, and this does that for me. I can then use this as my low poly mesh and bake all the information from the high poly. I compose it, paint it, and all sorts. I wouldn't say it completely replaces the need to retopologize. It's not really optimal for games, although you can use it in that way. But I can actually use this, go into it, tidy it up, and reduce some of the polys in places. So on the plus size, it's really easy to use, very powerful, excellent for fast retopology. It manages to keep the details, so fingers and face details. It adapts to the edge flow, which is really nice. It looks for edges and the contours. And something I haven't talked about here, but it's actually good for hard surfaces because it can detect the edges by the angle. So it will put lines down hard edges. So it's a very powerful tool. On the downside, it costs money. It's $60 for an indie license and $110 for a pro license. And it still doesn't give you full control that you have if you're manually retopologizing. Which brings me on to the next add-on, Retopo Flow, which is Retopo Flow 3 I'm using here. This gives you the most control, but it is more time consuming than something like Quad Remesher. So you have absolute control of your edge flow and spacing of your polygons, but you have to understand topology in order to do this, of course. It's much like manual topology, but with lots of useful tools to speed up the bits in between. So filling in big areas or the contour tool, which goes around cylindrical parts like fingers or legs and arms, can be extremely useful and save a lot of time. It's a bit like using the B-Surface tool in some places where you can draw topology on, but it has a lot more control once you've added that topology and you can kind of move it around, join it together and so forth. This I would say is definitely the option for the pro retopology artist because it gives you full control of exactly where you want the topology to go, but it does speed the workflow up with all the helpful tools. So the advantages are a very in-depth, well thought through tool with lots of functionality. It's a lot faster than manual topology because of all the tools, but it has the same amount of control, especially when it comes to things like cylinders. It's quite a big pain to wrap a mesh around something like a finger, whereas this will do it in seconds. The disadvantage is that you obviously need knowledge of topology, so it's not as nice as something like the quad remesher if you're a beginner. And of course, it's not as quick as something like the automated tools such as quad remesher. Also, it can be very expensive for a hobbyist. It's around $80. But if you want to use Blender professionally, create characters and so forth, then this is an absolute must. Now, a couple of other add-ons worth looking up, especially if you're on a budget. Now, it's important to say I've not had a chance to try either of these, but they're probably worth looking up if you're a hobbyist. The first one is the Tessellator, which is quadrilateral remeshing. It's similar to Instant Mesh, but a little bit more precise and easy to use by the looks of things. It looks like it's going to struggle again with details such as fingers and difficult areas like faces, and you can't assign more faces to certain areas like you can with the quad remesher, which is obviously a fair bit more money. The other one is Speed Retopo, and this is virtually free at only a dollar. It seems a really interesting option for combining lots of the available tools into a more manageable interface. It needs a bit more research from me, but I quite like the look of this one. But perhaps if you use it, then please comment below, look at the comments and see what people are saying, because it does look like quite a good one. So that should give you a good overview of all the tools that are available. I myself am using the quad remesher an awful lot, probably more than I should because it creates quite good topology. I also plan on using Retopo Flow a lot more when I start doing characters again. As from only using it a little bit, I found it a really huge time saver, so that's a definite one for me as well. In the past, I have used Instant Mesh quite a lot, and of course I use Decimate all the time for quick but dirty retopology. So hopefully this guide helps you and gives you some ideas. Do comment below with your thoughts. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.